Well-paid sources reported that a submarine had recently tied up at Dock 11 in the Hamburg harbour. But that was not all. Well, no, I'd imagine not. It's a big port. Top secret documents were also said to be at the dock, showing the routes of various German submarines in the North Atlantic. It would be a nightmare for the Nazis if the papers fell into enemy hands. I was infiltrated into the German Reich for exactly this purpose. No agent had ever returned from there alive. Only once I had the papers in hand would I be able to move on to the second part of the operation. Who wants to bet it involves explosions? The destruction of the submarine, for which air support had been promised. But first I had to find a way onto the docks. Try a boat? First things first, Violette has changed her outfit for this mission. Gone is the bomber pilot chic, replaced by this slick number. Despite wearing a shoulder rig, her holster is still firmly placed at the small of her back. I like to think that all she had to do to get into Germany was to put her hair up in a bun and scowl. Looks like the Elbe is busy generating a frame rate chuggingly large amount of fog, while the Nazis are busy putting sandbag forts up in front of their own facilities. Makes you wonder how they get those trucks everywhere. I can't resist a shed, so let's duck inside and do a bit of eavesdropping. For reference, the oil tanker I work on is just under 20,000 gross registered tons, and the largest current supertanker is about 10 times that. Sounds like they sank roughly the same amount of cargo as a single current container ship. Meanwhile, Nazis still don't seem capable of leading a radio off, so this Unterschaffier has got to go. This area is extremely long and well lit, so it can be somewhat difficult to get a drop on the quickly moving patrollers herein. Luckily for us, an opportunity is marginally quick to present itself. As soon as he comes back around to the ass end of this truck, I'll position myself in the single patch of shadows to the right. In the distance, you can see an officer, which is the main reason I'm waiting for this enemy to come back around. <coughs> Seems this particular guard started in on the rum a little early, or is just overly hydrated from the horrendously humid air. I think this is what the Brits call taking the piss. <laughs> Trying to show that he's not in a hurry, Herr Slow will meander his way back towards the truck and mumble something that Violette is apparently unwilling to repeat through her psychic closed captioning. I this time around, his self-importance will get the better of him, as his speed only makes him easier to catch. While our path lay forward, there's an awfully tempting shed off to the side that I feel the need to investigate. Good thing, too. Uh, otherwise, I would have left a Nazi alive, and that's rarely acceptable. German military doctrine specifically states that barbed wire is never to be maintained, which works in our favor, as otherwise I'd never be able to hop all these fences. Look at that. Somebody left a perfectly good lighter in the trash here.
You might think I've succeeded in making my way to the docks, judging by the dock we're currently walking on. Turns out, this is just a tedious mechanics platform. The cage ahead is currently locked, and since there's only a flak vest and a med kit inside, it's very unlikely we'll have to backtrack for it. Instead, we'll press on into this oddly configured warehouse and out into a machinery room. Continuing the tradition of placing sniper badges only in a place where a sniper would never be, there's one on the caged shelf here, and then down we go. Ziehen die Idioten da oben endlich den Kistenstapel hoch! Gleiche Schichtwechsel und ich komme hier nicht raus! What's that? You're blocked off from any help you may call for? Perfect. Shit. At least now he doesn't have to worry about the boxes. This is one of those instances where having upgraded stealth really helps. The exit was blocked, but the lever for the winch had to be there somewhere. Catching up to this soldier bypasses an entire mess where we'd have to break a fuse box and cycle back around. Now we have a rusty key and we can head back to a stairwell. You'll notice that unlike the French, the Germans do not make dizzying stairs. Oh, hello again. I'm starting to seriously question this professional agent claim of Violette's. The most confusing part of that sealed door is that there's no reason for there to be an extra landing here. There's nothing behind it, and there's no sections that utilize that space. It's just bizarre. Now we've reached the apex of the warehouse, but we still have a few more Nazis to take care of. As has been the norm for the past few missions, they have a tendency to patrol quickly and leave little time to catch them unawares. Unless you know exactly where to stand. By catching up to this guard and triggering his grenade at the proper moment, we can take out the last two with no issues. This lever will lift the boxes down below and free up the path to the docks. I'll jump over this fence to save some time and then head back down the unnecessarily long stairwell. And since we've got a moment, and we're in Hamburg, I'll explain the Hanseatic crosses we've been picking up. Effectively, they were medals awarded directly by the three cities that made up the Hanseatic League until the 17th century, Hamburg, Bremen, and Lübeck. Hamburg was the largest of the three and hence generated the majority of these crosses. They could be awarded to both military personnel and civilians, anyone who had aided in the war effort. Starting to sound more like a dock out here, but we're still not quite there yet. There sure are a lot of boxes heading to Bremen. Or in from Bremen, I can't really tell. I can see some boxes labeled Hamburg, but poor Lubeck is left out again. That's what you get for being the littlest city-state. Despite the amount of space for us to work in, we can be the most efficient by working close in. There are very few shadows to work with in this central area, so we're going to want to wipe this fella out and position ourselves to take down the guard in the center. Another puddle of gasoline, but using it would almost certainly alert the last guard in the area, so once again we'll go for a style over flammable substance. Whoops, we got a leaner. Now inside on the right there's a lever that will cut the electricity to a fence further on. 
there. Someone had left a window. They sure did, Violette. They sure did. Ich freue mich. Der Zustand der Einheit. Entstoppen. Zur vollsten Zufriedenheit. Fortunately for him, Herr Major will not be hearing any of that little speech, and he left a signet ring on his desk. Hold on. Click. We'll just rifle through the papers here. Doesn't look like any of them are the document we're looking for, but there is a letter. And then I suppose we can investigate Violet's window. This looks familiar. You know, guys, Hitler didn't ban astronomy. You don't have to hide your telescopes. There's one more soldier that is incredibly easy to just leave, but me and Violette, we've got contractual obligations. Since I left the other door open, he'll run right past us to that officer's apparently whistling corpse, and we're free to leave a nice surprise for Herr Major. Nope, nothing suspicious about there being a corpse every 15 feet. Not at all. It's not like we're trying to secretly steal sensitive combat plans or anything. It's convenient that they set up their massive box towers in a way that allows us to proceed. Now, Hamburg was an extremely important U-boat construction port. Being well protected from surface attack, as it is located several miles up the Elbe River, it also had access to the Baltic Sea through the Kiel Canal. This isn't our target U-boat, being the Type 7 mentioned before, but it's not surprising to see it here. Na, hast du dir schon die neuen Boote angeschaut? Klar! Die U-128 und die U-125. Die neuesten Modelle. Junge, Junge. Die besten u boote der Welt. Die Spannung ist ja kaum auszuhalten. Mit denen werden wir den Jungs dort drüben ordentlich einheizen. Du scheinst dich hier auszukennen. Das ist mein Steckenpferd. Mein Schwager ist Oberfenrich bei den Grauen Wölfen. Mit denen möchte ich lieber nicht tauschen. Lauter Selbstmord, wenn du mich fragst. Die haben nur. Aber die neuen Boote bekommen jetzt alle eine spezielle Anti-Radar-Beschichtung. Und Sonarstörkörper. Hört sich beeindruckend an. Ha, die werden sich doch wundern, wenn sie die neuen Torpedos zu spüren kriegen. Mit magnetischen Zündern. Und wir haben auch noch den Zaunkönig. Was soll das denn sein? Ein schlauer Torpedo mit eigenem Sonar. Folgt einfach den akustischen Signalen des Schiffschrauben. Auch wenn Schiff beitritt. Eine Wunderwaffe. Ja. Wahnsinn. Ja, Dann kannst du nur besser so nichts. Allerdings. Ich sag ja, den heizen wir noch ein. So, ich ja. muss weiter. Alles klar. Bis dann. Das wäre jetzt gut. Lucky for me, they chose to discuss all of their top secret projects in one brief conversation. It's a good thing those explosions were so localized, we'd be in trouble if they set off these torpedoes. Oh, a shed. A German submarine captain, completely drunk. I could make sure he never woke up again. One experienced hunter less. I want to consider killing this captain's exo because I don't know how much acing he's actually capable of. I don't think triggering his grenade will serve much of a purpose, so let's do this the old-fashioned way. Back the way we came to dispatch another smoker. And then we head for the crane, leaving a widowed submarine and an impressive trail of dead Nazis. More luck, they left the crane on. This 
will give us a way to get across and into the more sensitive areas of the sub pen. Sounds like my air support is going to have some opposition. Or they're very early. This guard's going to be very jealous of my gas mask. Let's just show him how well it works. Seems like he has a shiny key for us, and there's some ammo in a locker here. There's no reason to keep the gas mask on now, although there are barrels I could use from here on out. I'll need the whistle in this section, so off it goes. Now this next guard never turns towards the bridge, so there's no need to wait him out and we can push forward. In the distance, you can see a particularly excited Nazi. You'd think this is a one-time bug, but it has happened every single time I ran this mission. Circling behind these gasoline tanks, we can get into a position for an extremely tough kill. The patrolling guard does not stop on this end, and the other two have their backs protected and are facing each other. To get three silent kills, we're going to have to be a little inventive. And there's the hat trick. Make a quick sprint back to find some longshoreman's hidden stash, and then we'll be on our way. Now, who puts metal lattice work three feet out from the edge of the dock but doesn't maintain the barbed wire above it? Seems a mechanic has shown up to fix this whatever it is. He must be an excellent mechanic to get it running without taking a hand off of his gun. And as soon as he's gone, we'll wipe out Glasses, who seems to be nodding off in the corner. After dragging his body back behind these noxious barrels, we'll press a few buttons and jam something into that fan belt. Caught in the siren call of something to screw with, this intrepid engineer books it right back to his console. Sounds like he even managed to get it working again before I hamstrung him. Which is a good thing, as I assume it was supplying power to this panel here, which we'll use to electrocute the next soldier. Someone has stashed their supply of smokes up here on a wall above the restroom. As we exit the building, we're going to want to stay in close to the hide in the narrow strip of shadows. It's hard to see from here, but there's glass covering the ground between these two crates. So we'll want to wait until the guard passes back over it before making a go at him. Escaping through a hole left by somebody playing Cargo Jenga, we'll find ourselves back dockside.
This submarine in the background looks a little more our speed. The two-tiered gun suggests that it is the Type 9C. We still don't have many shadows to work with, so I'll just duck around and follow this soldier out to the edge of the next berth. I've learned the hard way in the past that the officer will see him if I leave him here, so best to tuck him away in the corner. Speaking of the officer, he'll turn around too quickly for me to make a break for him now, but he has a short path. Interestingly, if uh, he's alerted, the two guns on the sub will start firing at you, which makes the situation extremely dangerous. We're free to chase him down, despite the light not being in our favor. By the time he spots our shadow, it should be too late. <laughs> Rifling through his pockets, we find a code that might be useful down the line. Considering that both ends of this pier end in warehouses, one wonders why there are so many parked cars on it. There's an entrance that's easy to miss on the backside of this protrusion here, and inside we find some torpedoes and a pair of guards. Once they're both facing away from us, we can move between the next set of torpedoes. Our path is blocked by glass again, so I'm going to need to find an alternate way through. I knew I couldn't avoid that bug for an entire video. Once Glasswalker passes by, it's safe to emerge and use his lack of a jacket to our advantage. It makes the knife go in easier. The next guy is guarding a room with only one entrance and a top secret safe full of documents. He's still not doing the best job at it. Using the code from before, we can unlock the safe and complete step one. Excellent. These documents with the roots of the German submarines would be an enormous help to Well, Britain. that's a rather Anglo-centric view of things, Violet. There's some morphine on the desk, and we're free to traverse the glass now that everyone who would hear us is dead. I think I see a shed in the distance, so we're going to go ahead and investigate that. Looks like it contains another sailor stereotype. Delightful. Those two submarine aces won't be sinking any more freighters. At least we know exactly who this particular looted Knight's Cross belonged to. So long as we move quickly, there should be time to get over the fence and behind one of the large shore tanks before the pair ahead finishes chatting. It's always in one ear and out the other with these Nazis. We don't technically need to circle around this next tank, but it keeps us in a good rhythm to come out in the right time to slink up on the next guard. <coughs> After he's dead, we'll get a chance to see another truck that the Nazis have inexplicably placed in a location from which it would be very difficult to retrieve before passing into the next section. Man, Bremen must have a serious shortage of U-boat parts. Our quick and stealth comes in handy yet again, as it gives me time to dart forward onto the bridge and dispatch the final sober Nazi in this mission. Of course, no Velvet Assassin mission is complete without a drunken Nazi. I suppose you could count the two U-boat captains, but I think that's par for the course in the Kriegsmarine. And I have no idea why this soldier is back here, save for another way to ruin your score for the mission. With him down, we're free to sprint across to the Inner Harbor, which looks suspiciously like a rail yard. <laughs> 